Mark Griffith here, welcome to RC Hacker. Now today we're doing a range test and we're doing it in this pine plantation behind me. It's probably a little bit too thick to fly through, but it'll be a good test for this gear. Now, the gear I've got here is all fully legal in Australia. So I've got the FR Sky D4R2. Um, that puts out about 100 milliwatts, I think. Um, we've got a 5.8 gigahertz and 25 milliwatt video transmitter from Immersion RC up the top here. And I've got a camera down here and we have a servo as well. A servo there just so I can see what's moving. And right now it's transmitting through to these goggles. Um, these are the Fat Shark Attitude V3s. And it's transmitting through to those so I can see what I'll do, I'll go walking with this and the radio, and because the radio's got telemetry, it'll tell me if I lose signal with the uh, FR Sky unit, and obviously the goggles, I'll be able to see that straight through the goggles. So, FR Sky D4R2, and Immersion RC, 5.8 gigahertz, 25 milliwatt transmitter. And on top here, I've got a little cloverleaf Immersion RC, as well and on the top there as well so let's try this out i'm going to go for a walk down here and we'll see how far we get now i did this in ecuador once before and it was quite thick jungle and i've got a certain distance i got about 100 meters or so but i wasn't testing fpv gear i wasn't testing video i was just testing fr sky stuff but i'll link to that video below i've also got the gps so i know exactly how far i end up down here There's a bike track here. Okay, the video signal's starting to get a little bit scratchy. Just every now and then, hopefully we can see this. I can line that up. And our RSSI is at 55, which is fine. Yeah, the video signal's really starting to get scratchy now. Don't know how far we are. Alright, and I've completely lost my video signal now. The um, FR Sky is doing absolutely fine though. Let's have a look. If we can see that. Just about make out the servo. So the terrain here is, I'm in down amongst this, these blackberries and stuff, so it's really thick. I'd say 100 metres on the 5.8, but the FR Sky is holding up. That's on um, 51 for RSSI, which is fine. Now certainly if you were FPVing in this sort of area, you wouldn't want to go much further because if you crashed, you'd never find you. You'd never find it again, unless you got a big loud beeper or something like that. Alright, so this is probably, you know, the signal stays, you know, you can see well enough, even as you're moving around. I'm bloody impressed, actually. Let's see if we can hopefully show you that. Keep in mind, the quality is going to be terrible through this, the goggles and the camera. 
and we're about I'll have to double check on the GPS but we are 50 meters I think yeah we're 50 meters and a fair few trees back there between us. Okay, we're about at the limits of what the video signal can handle. The FR Sky system has outperformed the video signal by far and Let's see if we can. I can show you up there. They can capture that. It's pretty scratchy, but keep in mind where we are. I, I reckon 100 meters in down here. And what I'll do, what I'll do, I'll um, I'll mark this spot on the GPS as my maximum range. And our RSSI on the radio is uh, is 50 still. Oh, that's pretty good. And it hasn't dropped out yet either. Now I chose 5.8 gigahertz right in the middle of the center frequency of the um, immersion RC gear this time Better head back So I'll head back and we'll do a bit more of a um, open-air test Right now, the reason I'm testing this, I'm not trying for long range and I want to be legal and stuff. I just want to see, well, typically, particularly in Europe, you're not going to be able to buy anything too high power, like your 5.8 gigahertz high power stuff. It's, it's going to be very low power. and. Like, transmitting a TV signal is no small um, feat. It's actually quite a complex task. And, uh, sorry, it's, there's a lot of legalities involved in transmitting TV and transmitting a television signal. And the reason why the power is so much lower for video than it is for... Uh, like the FR Sky stuff is, is it uses a lot more bandwidth, it uses a lot more data and that video signal is spread over quite a high bandwidth and uh, on 2.4 gigahertz it's just hopping around and only use a, a tiny little bit of power and you can share it with Wi-Fi and all that sort of thing but if you use a 2.4 gigahertz tra video transmitter where there's Wi-Fi it'll stomp all over the Wi-Fi and completely kill it so that's why there's such a low limit on the amount that you can transmit from a little uh, video transmitter and the other thing is is these things are airborne too so the higher you get the more things that will interfere now fortunately on 5.8 all it's going to interfere with is baby monitors and things like that so not really anything that's um, how do you say it, that's mission critical or anything like that however I think there are some microwave links around in Australia that use the 5.8 gigahertz range to transmit stuff but all our stuff is in the ISM band so it shouldn't really be a problem. Alright we're at the paddock I'm going to set up some more gear. Alright so we're all set up just out there um, you can see our video signal in there and servo moving hopefully and we'll go for a quick burn across the paddock and, uh, Try not to run into any wombat holes. Right, 
Don't have PB and drive, it's not good. Still good, our signal's still fine. Right, now even from in the car, Got a good signal, I stick my head out and it's perfectly clear. So let me show you that. So that's from inside the car. Of course we've covered in metal and that is from outside the car and that's perfectly alright. Right, let's go just a little bit further, there's another paddock be able to show on the GPS where we just were and how far and all that sort of stuff. Could catch. I'm going to drop down into this gully. Even in this gully, there's, um, I'm still getting okay. Well, it's scratchy. It's not great, but it's, um. Oh, uh, there's the Tyrannus kicking off, the RSSI low. Says it's low again. Alright, Bitch and Betty says we're critical now. Although the car, the, the radio is sitting down there. If I hold it out, 47, we're fine. And our video signal, mm, no good. So, and I don't know if you can see what we're looking at. See, see that tree line? We've gone beyond that other side of the tree line. Keep in mind that's lying down, so she's going to bitch a bit because she's lying low down there. I don't know if I should be driving here. Oh, big hole. One, two. Oh, that's the true, and it's finally lost. And I've got signal again, so that's through a few gum trees and stuff. We're outside the paddock on the other side and our radio's back to normal. Alright, I'm going to call that tested. For me, I'm quite ready to start FPVing in this area and I'm going to go nuts. I don't have to worry about whether I'm going to lose signal 
or whatever. I've tested it at low level near the ground and with the multi-rotor up in the air a bit, you're going to get a lot further range too. Um, you don't want to put too many trees between yourself and your multi-rotor, but I found out that we can. With this uh, Immersion RC gear, we can actually do that. And I'm really impressed with that actually. That's pretty cool, considering it's only 25 milliwatts. And I think a lot of that goes down to the receiver that's in those uh, fat sharp dog goggles, that new receiver that they reckon is so good. It's nice to get hold of gear that uh, the average person's gonna buy. I know I like my open source stuff and I like doing my own antennas, but this is all off the shelf stuff that you can typically buy and you can get this stuff here in Australia and I'm sure worldwide. worldwide. Immersion RC is, um, is a European company, I think, and uh, Fat Shark is Australian. Another thing to think of, you need to go and do this testing yourself. Don't just think, I'll oh, put it all together and go and fly, because you might have got something wrong. There might be a bad antenna connection, anything like that. Um, it's always worth testing this stuff on the ground first. And another thing to remember is your noise floor. Out here, there's nothing. There's no noise floor. I, you know, the nearest houses are a kilometre away. There's nothing really at all. But the other site that I'm going to fly at as well, we'll test that out probably late, at a later date, but that's got houses all around it and stuff, so that's going to have a bit of noise. And wherever you are, you may have different results as well. So make sure you test your gear. The FR Sky stuff is solid as usual. Um, I typically only used it in the jungle and I was really impressed with the jungle and these dry Australian trees, it tends to penetrate a lot better in that foliage and that 5.8 gigahertz stuff, that video transmitter, just 25 milliwatts and more than enough for any legal FPV work that you're gonna do. So, you know, if there's anyone raving about how they've got a 600 milliwatt uh, FPV transmitter and all that sort of stuff, it doesn't mean a lot, you don't need it, unless you're trying to go kilometers and kilometers, but in which case, guaranteed these people don't have a license to do that, not many people do. Anyway, cheers. If you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down and I will catch you next time.